بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وشم سے و دو خاہا بائی دی سن این ایٹس برائٹنس والقمر ازا تلاہا and by the day, and by the moon, when it follows the sun. Tala yatlu means to follow. This tilawa, tilawa tul Qur'an, this word is derived from this root. In reading Qur'an, we follow with the text. And some of the people, you know, they move their fingers along with the text. You might have seen. So, it's a following. You are following the text. But the exact literal meaning of tala yatlu is to follow someone. By the sun and its brightness, and by the moon when it follows the sun. And by the day when it reveals the sun, as if day has shown us the sun. And by the night, when it enshrouds the sun, covers the sun, sun is gone, not visible. And by the heaven, and as he created it, built it, or by him who has created it. These are two ways of translating this. Ma, was samai, and by the heaven, wama banaha, and the way Allah has created it, or by him who has created it. Wal ard wama tahaha, and by the salt, by the earth. And by him who created it, spread it, or by the earth, and as it has been spread. For nafsin wa masawaha, and by the human soul, and as he has finished it, created it, finished it, given him the finishing touches. These are the eight ayat. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Then he has inspired in it, in the soul, human soul, with the consciousness of the wickedness and piety. This human soul is not blind. It sees. This is right, this is wrong. This is good, this is bad. These basic moral values are inherent in human spirit, human soul. Man knows by his very nature, this is good, this is bad, this is evil, this is good. Now what is the statement on which these eight oaths have been taken? Now, if there are differences, there will be different ends also. وَالشَّمْسِ وَدُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ اِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ اِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ اِذَا يَخْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا تَحَاهَا وَنَفْسِ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَالْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ buries it, the saha, whosoever buries it in the dust, he is a failure, he is doomed. This ayah has first, once more come in Surah Al-Ala, Sabbah Isma Rabbika Al-Ala, Qad aflaha man tazakka, Qad aflaha man tazakka, half of this statement was there. But here this statement, if you see the day and the night, if you see the sun and the moon, if you see the sky and the earth, if you are seeing all these things different, so the end will be different. If the good and evil are different, then you know there are going to be two goals, two ends. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. Definitely successful will be one who purifies his soul. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا دَسَّا يَدُسْسُو We had read it that a Bedouin when it was told to him that a daughter has been born then he kept on thinking should I keep her despite all this humiliation or I should go and bury him in the dust in the sand 
That is the Saha. I told you, if this nafs has not been purified, if this kid and libido has overwhelmed it, what does it mean? As if this soul or spirit is dead and buried in this grave. Now this body of mine is a grave for this soul. قَدْ أَفْلَحْ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Now this happens at the individual level and this happens also at the collective level. So collective level is mentioned in the remaining five ayat of this surah. كَذَّبَتْ سَبُودُ بِتَغْوَاهَا إِذِمْ بَعَسَ أَشْقَاهَا فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَتَ اللَّهِ وَسُقِيَاهَا فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَعَقَرُوهَا فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْبِهِمْ فَسَوَّاهَا وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقْبَاهَا صدق الله العظيم One thing I told you before is that from Surah Al-Muzzammil till the end of the Quran all these surahs are in perfect pairs but at some places you will find two pairs can be grouped together to make a subgroup. And this is the first example. Surah Al-Shams and Surah Al-Layl, they are a pair. Surah Al-Duha and Surah Al-Inshirah, they are a pair. But all four of them go to make a subgroup. There is one subject which develops gradually in these four surahs. I told you that in Surah Al-Shams, there are eight ayat of oath, but the reality or the statement on which these oaths have been taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَخْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا تَحَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Now that statement comes, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Verily, the one who purifies his soul is successful. And the one who buries it in dust is unsuccessful. Now, we have been translating this taskiyah by the word purification. Actually, it's very hard to translate many fundamental terms of Quran into some one word of English language. It's very difficult. Taskiyah doesn't mean only purification. It means purifying something in order that it should develop. This word, you know, is applied by the Arabs, Bedouin Arabs, to the function of a gardener. When he enters his garden, some of the plants he has himself sowed, either for flowers or for fruit. But around those plants he finds grass has grown up, other unwanted vegetation is there. So what's the result? Whatever is the nourishment in the soil, is now shared by this also. It's not all going to the plant which you have sown. In the same way, the oxygen from the air that is also being shared. So he removes all these things. This is called Taskiya. Because they are hampering the growth of that plant which he has sown in order that it should grow up, be mature, bear either fruits or flowers. So man actually is a plant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has planted it. And he wants to see it flourishing, growing. But what type of growth? Not the growth of an animal. His growth as vice student of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who reflects the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his personality. So this process to remove all the hindrances in the way of the spiritual development of a human being, which is Taskiyah. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. 
only that one is successful who has really purified his soul, developed his soul, his ana, his khudi. Which Allama Iqbal calls tamir e khudi, construction of yourself. Qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dasaha. And I told you, dasa ya dusso, in Arabic means to bury something in the sand. This, you know, came in Quran for those Arab Bedouins who used to bury their female child's daughters alive. Am yadussuhu fi turab. He kept on thinking, should I keep him, should I keep her with me, despite this humiliation, or I should bury her. Say, dasa yadussuhu. This is it. Waman khaba man dasa, waqad khaba man dasaha. If you can't take care of that real real self of yours. You are only taking care of the animal self of yours, the animal aspect of your existence. Then this animal existence of yours becomes like a grave in which that spirit is buried. Only this grave is mobile, it is moving. It is not fixed at one place. But every human being that becomes a mobile grave of his real spiritual identity and self. Now this regards mainly personal and individual purification and development of the ego or development of the self. But now we come to the collective level, human society. This also behaves in the same way. If there is no arrangement of a purification of that society and that nation, that people, that community. It is doomed. So a process has to continue, which we call Amr bil Maruf Nahir in Munkar. At the collective level, this enjoining upon people whatever is good and forbidding them from whatever is wrong, it is actually the purification of the society. This process has to continue if this society is to live as a healthy society. If this process comes down, then the society is doomed, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a devastating chastisement, and they are finished. So one example, all you know, the messengers of Allah who came, they were doing this, purifying, trying to purify the nation. Purifying the, the society, purifying the community from the evils and ills, moral ills, or, you know, transgressions against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if they failed, actually they didn't fail, the society or the community or the nation failed. Then a devastating chastisement of Allah came and they were destroyed. One example is quoted here, Kazabat Samud o Betahwaha. The Samud belied the truth in their insurgence and transgression. Hazrat Salih alayhi salatu was sent to them. But this nation failed. Izimbaasa Ashta. Now to cut a long story short. Well, you know that she camel was given to them as a very big sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at their demand. But then, you know, one of the chiefs who was the most wicked, most wretched chief, he rose up to kill the she camel. فَقَارَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَتَ اللَّهِ وَسُخِيَا The messenger of Allah warned them. Beware, it's the camel of Allah, it's the she camel of Allah. Don't touch it. La tabusu ha besuin. At another place we have read. Na katallahi masukiyaha. And you know, keep the stern of drinking water. Don't touch it with any bad intention. But, fatazabuhu faqaruha. But then, they belied him and killed her. فَدَمْ دَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْبِهِمْ So their Lord crushed them for their sin. فَسَوَّاهَا And levered them to the ground. 
or another meaning is made them all equal. What does it mean? There were rich, there were rich, there were poor. There were the leaders, there were the led, common people. But when this chastisement comes, you know, then all are equally involved in it, inflicted by it, afflicted by it. So we have that ayah in Surah Al-Anfal. But taqufitnatan la tusiban al lazina zalabu min kum khasa. Beware of that chastisement that comes, if it comes, then not only those who are involved actually in these sins, not only they are punished, others are also punished. Because they were guilty of not purifying their society. At only one place we find in Surah Al-Araf, those who till the last end go on, Ya Muruna Bil Maruf Wa Munkar, they continue their struggle to enjoy the power whatever is good and to forbid people from whatever is wrong. They are saved only. Otherwise, whether people were actually involved in their sin or not, both are included in the collective chastisement that comes. Now a little distraction here. This role that was being played by the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now by assigned after the institution of prophethood and messengerhood having come to an end in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this role has been assigned collectively to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for all times to come for the whole of humanity. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَعْبُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْحَوْنَا لِلْمُنْكَرَ وَتُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ if we don't perform their duty, then we are doomed. Then we deserve the chastisement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahmatay hai teri aghiyar ke kaashano par ho barf girti hai to bechare musulmano par why? We deserve it. You are not doing your job. You have become just a nation like the other nations of the world. You are rather a humiliated nation having no respect in the committee of the nations. Nobody asks you any opinion in any international matter. Kasnami Pursakya Bhaiya Kishti, who you are? Nobody asks you. Zoribat alayhi muzillatu wal maskanatu wa ba'u bi ghadami min Allah. Now from this collective doom, only those people can hope salvation and saving by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who exert up to their utmost in discharging this duty of Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi al-Munkar. Only they can hope. That is why we have found that ayah also in the same surah Ali Ibrahim. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ مُمَّتُ يَدْعُونَ إِذَا الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْبُرُونَ بِلْ مَعْرُوفِ وَيَدْهَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Only these people who keep engaged in this three items of agenda Calling mankind to good. Yadruna ilal khayr. Wa yamruna bil maruf. And joining upon them whatever is good. Wa yanhauna lil munkar. And forbidding them from whatever is wrong. Whosoever continues, continues, continues. Whether someone listens or not. They don't worry. They don't have to worry. They have to discharge their duty. But they can earn salvation for them, at least, for themselves. Ulai kahumul muflihu. Wala yakhaf uqbaha. The last ayah. Allah doesn't fear its consequences. You know, it happens in collective affairs. Supposing there is a king and he sees some of his chieftains or some of his subordinates, he is doing something wrong. But if, he is, if I touch him, if I bring him to book, there might be a bit turmoil. He has supporters. So he has to think twice. As we have read in Suratul Mumin, Firaun couldn't do anything. He wanted to kill, kill Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. But when that, a moment from Ali Firaun stood up 
and he gave that sermon. No, he was, he couldn't do. Although he was the person claiming to be God. Allah Rabbu Kumul Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares for none. Wala yakhafu yukmaha. He doesn't have to fear that there can be rebellion, there can be some, you know, untoward results, unpleasant thing might happen. No, no, he, he can do whatever he likes. He devastated and destroyed the whole nations. And he doesn't have to fear that something wrong can appear. <laughs>